Hey guys, my name is Mary Anna Turpin, and as of December 9th, 2016, I am a private pilot, and I managed to get it in 49 hours, or less than 50, and today I wanted to tell you the techniques I used and the things that helped me get the private pilot's license in less than 50 hours. Now, a couple disclaimers before I go into this. Uh, anything I say, you need to back it up by what your CFI says, because your CFI knows what's best for you, your CFI knows what's best for the terrain you're working with, so anything I say, um, back up with what he says and confirm with him. Another disclaimer, this is how I did it, this is not, this is not, may not be how you do it, so a couple of things I did just might not work for you, it, it just doesn't work, and that's totally fine. This is more like a guide as to sort of get you started and get you thinking about what you need to be doing uh, to get it in less than 50 hours. And another thing is, you might not even want to get it in less than 50 hours. You might think you're not a safe pilot at uh, less than 50. And you might want to wait until you're 60 or 70 and that's totally fine. But we all know that flight training is super expensive. And me personally, I wanted to get it in as little time as possible because um, it, 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 it is very pricey. It can be like 120 from a plane uh, per hour and then $60 from the instruction. Or, I mean, in my case, it wasn't that bad, but it can be that bad. So without further ado, here are some tips and tricks to help you get your pilot's license in as little time as possible. Number one, try to have the money you need for flight training put away already. Now, why do I say this? I say this because you could be 20 hours into your flight training and your cash runs out and all of a sudden you can't train anymore and it could be another year or two until you pick it up again. And by that time, your skills will have deteriorated and it's almost as if you're starting from the beginning. So what was that 20 hours of training for? That like $3,000 you spent, it was all for nothing. So make sure you have the money set aside already. How much is it going to cost to get your pilot's license? Well, if you're lucky, it can be as little as 6000 or it can be as much as 10000 It's somewhere usually in that range. At the bare minimum, 40 hours, it's going to be around 6000 Maximum, hopefully, it's going to be 10000 It can be a lot more, uh, depending on the kind of plane you get and the instructor you have. Obviously, uh, an instructor who has a lot of instructing time is going to be very expensive. An instructor who you're his third student not very expensive at all, but is it worth it if the instructor doesn't have a lot of experience? You have to make that decision. So, number one, make sure you have the money or you will at least have the money. And there are a lot of scholarships too, you know, look around. Uh, there are scholarships through Civil Air Patrol, there are scholarships through AOPA, there are scholarships through uh, Women in Aviation International. Look around. Number two, Get the written out of the way before you even start flying the plane. Why do I say this? Well, for one thing, it's recommended by a lot of CFIs. Uh, Jason Shepard of the M0A.com actually suggested this, getting the written out of the way first. And one reason for that is it makes your training two succinct sections. One is the knowledge portion and one is the practical portion. And to me, that is, it's very even and it's very clean. One, you're learning all the practical side and the other, you're learning all the like, not theoretical, but all, all the rules like uh, Federal Aviation Rela Regulations, Aeronautical Information Manual, and so on. If you get the written out of the way, f also it's a good gauge of how devoted you actually are to aviation. So a lot of people look at the amount you have to learn through the written exam and say, I'm out. So it's a good way of saying, okay, maybe you have the money to invest towards this, but do you have the effort? Do you have the drive? It's a good way of saying, how devoted you are to actually getting the license or, or the certificate. Uh, there's a lot of debating, oh, it's a license or it's a certificate. Technically, it's a certificate, but everyone calls, everyone calls it a pilot's license. So, uh, Another good thing about getting the written out of the way is you won't extend your training a ridiculously long time. Remember, we're trying to get in as few hours as possible, so it doesn't cost us a lot of money. And if you keep pushing back the written or if you keep pushing it back and doing your flight training simultaneously, then it's going to basically, you're going to uh, keep rolling out all that money as you're continuing your flight training and studying for the written. So it's, so like I said, best to get the written out of the way first. Um, 
studying for the written, I definitely suggest using uh, ASA, um, ASA's prep book. It has, a, it has a ton of questions that basically put you in the right mindset for the test. Uh, yeah, so ASA's prep book. I also suggest going to a ground school. A lot of people uh, don't go to ground school because it's not technically required. You can do a home study. Um, but definitely, there are just going to be some things that are going to be difficult for you to understand and you might need help with. So going to a ground school would be great. If you can't afford ground school, get with a pilot buddy who's willing to do it, who's willing to do it for free or at a very low price. Sometimes you can ask your CFI, but they might charge their instruction time. But if you're hanging around an airport, there will be other aviation nerds or aviation geeks who want to help you out. So, number two. Get the written out of the way first. Number three, make the most of every single flying lesson. And how do you make the most of every single flying lesson? Well, I'm going to tell you a couple techniques that I used. Um, number one, try not to make the same mistake twice. And I say that, but you're going to make the same mistake two, three, maybe even five times before you really perfect it. And why is that? Well, it's because aviation is hard and learning how to fly is hard, and when you're doing like two or three things at once, like talking on the radio and making sure your airspeed is good and making sure that you're descending at the right rate and all this jazz, it's gonna be hard to focus on correcting things. It just is. So when I say don't make the same mistake twice, I say try not to make the same mistake twice. And you try by acknowledging the mistake, by trying to keep it in the front of your mind, and basically by continually and always trying to improve yourself. You don't want to be as good as you were last lesson. You want to be better than you were last lesson. So yeah, try not to make the same mistake twice. Another way you can really get the most out of your flying lesson is by really, there's this thing called chair flying. Uh, again, Jason Shepard of the M0A dot com recommends this chair flying is just you're sitting at home no airplane in sight and you simulate flying the airplane in your head and you go through all the mistakes you made last time you just sit down you imagine that you're taking off you imagine that you're performing a short field takeoff you basically simulate flying the airplane in your head and it's three of charge now is that going to be the same as actually flying the airplane no, it's not. There's some things you can't simulate and there's some things you just can't, it's going to be different. But it at least helps you to, it, it gives you flight time that's basically three of charge. So I would definitely use the technique of chair flying. Um, it's really great and it's three of charge. So yeah. Number three, make the most of every single flight lesson. Number four, uh, make sure you know exactly where you are in your training and make sure that you are tracking how many hours you have and how many hours you have left. And of course, what I mean by that is know that you need three hours of nighttime flying, you need three hours of simulated instrument, you need uh, one nighttime cross country, you need uh, five hours of solo cross country and five hours of, and 10 hours of solo, soloing overall. So make sure you already have that planned out in your head when those hours are gonna be. Um, basically, always know what's next, what phase of training you should be entering in next. Um, so just being hyper aware of your training because your CFI, you could be one of several of his students and he's not always going to be, all right, now it's this next phase of your training and this, this next phase and this next phase. He should be, he or she should be. Um, but you just have to admit they have a lot of more students and you need, and it's an active, you take an active role in your education. This isn't like high school and you're just sitting down there and you're being told what to do. You need to be active and proactive in your training and you need to and if you're um, if you've already soloed and 
you're 20 hours in and you need to turn to him and say, well, I guess it's time to start the cross country phase uh, or it's time to start this phase or it's time to start doing this. And I mean, he will tell you if you're ready or not. He or she will tell you if you're ready or not to start, start the next phase. Um, basically just being proactive in your own training and knowing exactly what phase you're supposed to start. So that was number four, knowing how many hours you're at and how many hours you need left at all times. All right, guys, those were my four tips on how to get your pilot's license in as little time as possible. I hope you liked the video, and I just have a couple more uh, helpful guides for you. I would really suggest you watching m0a.com uh, and listening to Jason Shepard's podcasts. They're really helpful. They really help me study for the written and the, and the oral portion um, of, the, of the practical test. And I would also suggest you watching Cindy Holman in preparation for the written exam because she really simplifies uh, a lot of complicated um, aviation concepts. So Cindy Holman, Jason Shepard from M0A.com and if you have any questions you can let me know but again I'm just a private pilot with very low hours. That was my disclaimer at the beginning. It's going to be my disclaimer at the end so it's always best to go to your CFI first. And have a great day and happy flying. Hope you have blue skies.